Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with a book haul today and it's been so long since I've done a book haul. I have a huge stack of books here to catch up on. Um, I'm about to go to lunch and I have to, I'm making a salad to take and the onion and the dates and something else, another ingredient, have to soak for 20 minutes. So th I thought this is a good opportunity. I think I'm meant to be using that 20 minutes to make the rest of the salad. But anyway, I'll deal with that when I get back. So I thought I'd sneak in a book haul. The first book, and I got this a while ago on Matthew Sharapa's recommendation, is Lote by Shola von Reinhold. And this is part of the 20 in 20 series. So Jacaranda Books released 20 black British 20 books by black British writers in one year. But Matthew Sharapa raved about it and it just sounded really intriguing. It's about a woman called Matilda, I believe who becomes obsessed with the bright young things of the 20s and then unearths a forgotten black poet called uh, Hermia Druitt. And I don't know if that's a real poet or if this is fictional because it sounds like it's quite a playful novel. And she goes travelling and goes on a journey of her aesthetic imagination but also, I think, to a, an artist's residency in a European town which sounds amazing and it is from champagne theft and black modernisms to art sabotage alchemy and lotus eating proto-luxury communist cults Matilda's journey through modes of aesthetic expression guides her to truth and the convoluted ways it is made and obscured. So it sounds incredible and is apparently really funny as well. So I'm really keen to dip into this one and I just haven't found the right time yet. It will be one that I'll come to soon, I hope. So that's Loat. And then a beautiful looking book that Sean the Book Maniac kindly sent me. And this is called Birds, Art and Life, A Year of Observation by Keo McClear. And it just sounds beautiful. It's intricate and delicate as bird song. Um, it's his observation of the natural world. So sometimes I really like reading a more nature-based book and a non-fiction read, and it can be quite meditative and quite calming to do that So um, and learn something along the way. So I'm really looking forward to this one, Birds Art Life. I think that will be some good zen time. Well, I could be wrong. It could be a really hectic book. I'm not sure, but I'm imagining that it will be very soothing. So that's that one. Thank you, Sean, for that. And next, a couple of books that I picked up when the uh, recent turmoil happened and is still happening in Afghanistan, and I just wanted to learn more about the country and the politics and the history and what has been happening. So there were lots of books. That, you know, there is a long list of books that you could read, and this one... Um, is by Steve Cole called Directorate S and he's also written another one that the name escapes me at the moment that was also highly regarded but he seems to be quite knowledgeable. This has been described as spellbinding and a magisterial account. It's about the CIA and America's secret wars in Afghanistan and Pakistan from 2001 to 2016. So not quite to the current time but very recent history and I'm interested to read it it is quite chunky but he seems to be one of the more highly respected writers in terms of I suppose white writers or you know English from the English speaking world um, on this region and it's been described as spectacular and impressive authoritative hugely detailed well that that doesn't sell me on it because that sounds like it will be a slog. Extraordinary and engrossing. So it's got very, very good reviews. I'm interested to read it. Again, it's finding the right time, isn't it? But I think this is, will be useful to refer to. That's Directorate S um, and also quite intriguing. And the other one that really caught my eye is called Bukashi or Buzkashi. I don't know how to pronounce it, by G. Whitney Azoy, Game and Power in Afghanistan. And this is a game I know nothing about at all, but I'm really interested to read the book about it. And apparently it's very much a national game and it's about almost bluff or 
who is the strongest and who to follow. And apparently it helps explain the politics of Afghanistan because if you understand the game and what it means in the national psyche, it helps you to understand how people respond to political movements and political parties. So that I thought would be useful. And the cover is quite out there. The cover's great. Anyway, I'm interested in this one. And again, it just has so many people who say it's a real game, well, game change is not the word. So many people who have cited this as a really important book and masterful um, and again, this is a, I think he's a white author, but who has a real love of Afghanistan and has spent a great deal of time there. So um, that will be interesting as well, Buzkashi. And it actually has pictures and I think it will have a bit of history. And yeah, I like looking at history and at country and cult at cultures from the point from a lens of a game or something quite specific I find that can be a, a sort of jumping off point to learning much more about that country there was a game uh, there was a book about China called the Fig forbidden game about golf and it just from that one topic you learn so much about China from that game you know what is ostensibly a a sport or a game. So change of pace now onto another fiction read. This is called Rabbits for Food by Binny Kirschenbaum. And this was recommended by Molly, who's one of our listeners of Books on the Go podcast. And she said she thought we would like this. I had not heard of it before, so I was really intrigued and I had to order it. The cover, I'm going to say that the cover is not for me, but I'm really interested to hear your thoughts because I think Benny Kirschenbaum has been interviewed about this topic. She has views about book covers and she some of her books have been sold with sort of chick lit covers which she has not liked and probably undersells them or risks leaving out part of her readership who wouldn't or men who think that it's chick lit and therefore think that perhaps it's not for them or other readers who think it looks too light or fluffy. So she's got views about this and this cover is certainly not the chick lit style, but I just, the, the, the bunny rabbit puts me off. But let me know what you think. It's a very interesting, it's certainly an eye catching cover. And the book sounds really funny. It's, well, funny and dark and profound as well. But it's about a woman who's in a psychiatric ward and is making notes of her time there, I believe. And, but with a very wry, sort of dark sense of humor. So I'm interested to read this. And it will be, an intro, I think this will be a, a a contrast or a companion read to Sorrow and Bliss, which also uh, addresses mental health and mental illness from the narrator's point of view. So that's Rabbits for Food. I think Annie and I will do this on the podcast. So stay tuned for that one. Then I picked up just because I didn't even know this was coming out, but The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. And I didn't need to know anything more about it because I loved Elif Shafak's book, The uh, the Strange, oh my goodness, The Ten, I've gone completely blank on the name, but the one that was shortlisted for an award a year or two ago, Ten Strange, oh my gosh, it has completely gone. It had a sort of a long name. And then the other one was The Bastard of Istanbul, which we read on the podcast. Um, and there are a couple of others in her backlist that I haven't read yet. Ten, oh, it was the 10 seconds before death or the 10, what was it? Hang on a second. I'm going to look up in here. 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world. I had to look that up in the, in the inside of the book. So I couldn't remember that title, but I loved the book. And so I'm really interested to read this. I hadn't even known that it was coming out. Um, Polly Sampson says it's an enchanting, compassionate and wise novel and storytelling at its most sublime. And I would expect nothing less from Alif Shafak. She's such a an interesting thinker and a beautiful writer, really lyrical, um, elegant writer, and always with a point of view, well, coming from the Turkish point of view and having lived in various places and in different cultures. And she just 
infuses so much life and so many different perspectives into her writing. So I'm really looking forward to this, The Island of Missing Trees. And next, a book that I'm reading at the moment, Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe, The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty. And a friend recommended this and I had seen it I think on social media and had just thought it looked a bit too chunky. It is chunky. And so that I didn't commit to reading it, but then my friend said he couldn't put it down and it is so fascinating. It's also quite grim and depressing, of course, but it is really well written. It's almost reminding me a bit of Michael Lewis and I love his non-fiction because it's telling a story and it gets you so engaged and you meet the characters and it's almost like a, a novel or a thriller and he he has that similar really good style so it's keeping me completely gripped and it's about the Sackler family I think what I like is that it's interweaving so many things that are that uh, I enjoy reading about so it's the family and the sort of modern American history from a one family's point of view and then it's the medical and pharmaceutical industries which are interesting um, and we know what's coming we know the oxycontin opioid crisis in America so we sort of the tensions building because we know how bad it does get but it's still fascinating to see the build-up of how did that happen and so it's also the advertising and marketing industries but then the legal case and I love the sort of lawyers point of view the investigative journalists who helped bring it to light so there are so many angles to this and then the philanthropy because they have given so much to major arts institutions and that is raises lots of questions about accepting that money which is is tainted so I'm finding that really uh, it is obviously grim but also fascinating to read so that's empire of pain i really recommend that i'll come back with a wrap up of that one um real estate by deborah levy which so many people have recommended and amanda and i are going to do on the podcast recently it was in the guardian books hottest books that you need to be reading right now list and I liked Deborah Levy's book Hot Milk. I thought that was very dreamy but exquisitely written. Um, I haven't read her other books. I think there was one other that I one other novel that I might have read, but I haven't read her nonfiction. Um, so this sounds really good, real estate, and we'll, that will be coming up soon. And then another couple that I bought on Impulse, one is Assembly by Natasha Brown and solely because I keep seeing it on social media and it's also, when I'm, so I was intrigued and I thought I might or might not read it to see what all the fuss is about but when I saw how small it was, how short it was, I thought well that's easy, that's not a big commitment so I picked that up and that's Assembly. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts if you've read that one. Yeah, and Bernadine Evaristo has called her a stunning new writer. So that sounds amazing. And How Beautiful We Were by Imbolo Mbue, which is the follow-up to her novel Behold the Dreamers, which I really loved and I read that a few years ago. So again, I hadn't, I think I had seen something about this coming out, but I'd forgotten this was coming out. And when I saw it in the bookshop, I had to get it immediately um, and I don't know anything about it. So let's have a look on the blurb. Set in a fictional African village. I don't like fictional places, but I it depends on the book. Sometimes it works, but let's see. Fictional African village of Kosawa. How Beautiful tells the story of a people living in fear amidst environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. So it sounds all very plausible and depressing. Pipeline spills have rendered farmlands infertile. Children are dying. Their fight will come at a steep price, one which generation after generation will have to pay. Told from the perspective of children and the family of a girl named Thula, it's an exploration of what happens when the drive for profit and the ghost of colonialism come up against one community's determination to hold on to its land and a young woman's willingness to sacrifice everything. So that sounds quite powerful. So I'll look forward to reading that one, how beautiful we were. And that is the end of my large book haul. So let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought. 
and I will come back soon with wrap up. I can't promise to have read all of these by the end of the month, but over the next few months, um, I'll be wrapping these up as I read them. And Empire of Pain will be the first one that that's just um, I'm glued to that. So I'll see you soon. Bye for now.